Mysterio moments before his death. Really setting the tone for this movie by picking right up where we left off, even having similar looking extras next to MJ. Hey, I don't remember Endgame Peter being in the Marvel logo like that. Yep, he replaced Civil War Peter. Spider-Man was responsible for the brutal murder of Mysterio, who will no doubt go down in history as the greatest superhero of all time. Appreciate that Alex Jameson hits greatest just as Tony is snapping in the Marvel logo. Honestly, this first 60 seconds is a pretty solid reflection of our world right now. Beck's illusion fell apart and froze in Far From Home, and he was undeterred. They'll see what I want them to see. They'll believe anything. And after everyone saw the drones, he still claimed the elementals were real, and now J. Jonah Jones is saying something so categorically ridiculous only a buffoon wouldn't say, wait, what about the guy that stopped all of the universe from getting snapped away? Just A plus commentary, no notes. What the f Cabbie censoring. <laughs> in Civil War, Peter said the reason he needed the iris goggles was to block out the extrasensory input, but that doesn't mean he can't use it for facial expressions just like his cartoon and comic counterparts. Also, I'm sure he's freaking out about MJ's safety, but I love that he also might possibly be freaking out that MJ's his girlfriend? Are you Spider-Man's girlfriend? <laughs> Humans, am I right? Ah, uh, the commodification of real events. Ah, yeah, whatever, the Rogers musical is aces, not complaining. But I'll kill you! What? I thought you said your dad really liked me! Yeah, well, not anymore! See, it's not the stupid, he hates you because you're a boy and I'm his daughter trope, it's because he's Spider-Man and you know what, never mind. I talk about Spider-Man parent stuff in the Nebula Companion video, shameless plug! Dude! No! Dude! Not since basketball has a dude scene worked quite so well. But I understand her fear, MJ's tend to get dropped off the Queensboro Bridge. Dude! What the? Green screen? Nope, forget it. Cancel the movie. Negative one million wins. I don't even want to watch this now. Aw oh, man, Delmars has had to rebuild three times. It makes you think twice about providing Sandys to Peter. Come on, come on, come on! Okay, I'm so sorry! Now, now hold on a sec. Did Spidey's webbing shake the light pole as he launches them up into the air and then stay on the light pole and the manhole after Peter apologizes? Nah, we're back on track. <laughs> they aren't there yet. Pete's planning to save the light bum touching from marriage, which... Oh, now I'm sad. It was fun. I could have been more fun. I can be fun. We'll hang out again. Wait. When do you think? Well done on both actors' parts. They are selling it. I've been married for double digit years and this still stings. Happy is bummed and trying, but not too pushy, and May is just like, dude, I'm trying to be nice. Oof, been there. Oh no, oh god, oh no, Peter. I don't know what to do. Peter? Interesting how the throes of passion and having your entire life unraveled create similar sound effects. I've said it before about a mid 20s actor playing a high school kid, so I'll say it again. Tom Holland's workout routine. May mouthing, this is awkward, go, is perfection. Love the chaos of this long take. The frantic camera movements trying to keep up with Peter and MJ. Quality oneer. The obvious joke here would have been to have JK pantsless, but I like the continuity for his character. JJ isn't going to work without his suit on. The compromise ends at shoes. But I also love that he's clearly been obsessing over Spidey in the background for years. Peter just hasn't been his photographer. Not cool. We all know you can only do that if he says, I don't know. I don't know. The DODC come in full circle. First, they essentially created Speederman's first villain, and now they are one. I guess you shouldn't count all your chickens before they're... <laughs> Vulture, because Vulture's in the DODC from before, but now, you know, shut up. It's touches like this that make this world feel real. He's got world-changing weaponry in his apartment, and he's saved the world multiple times now, but he's a poor teenager, so it's still a fire hazard mess of wires. Don't say anything without a lawyer! Jinx, you owe me an ending the cash bail system. Kinda helped him get the space. So in Spider-Man's illegal vigilantism, you were his main accomplice. Stewie, I like you better when you're screwing over Kendall or defending Anna. Ah, and I almost forgot, look at this guy jumping after Peter. What, what's that he jumped off of? Huh, a cap. <laughs> Solid cameo catch, just in case there was any question of whether he's really Daredevil. Give me Vincent D'Onofrio's kingpin in the MCU. What? Oh, right, right. Anyway, it might be weird if Foggy ever meets Foggy. Also fun fact, apparently this was initially a snow globe, but since the glass of the globe would have broken, they changed it to a brick. How did you just do that? I'm a really good lawyer. A plus lawyering. I love Peter just casually carrying all the suitcases. With great biceps comes great carrying capacity. Safe. He may not have always been the most helpful, but he's polite. Sort of cute that Happy adopted him after his inventor died. This is it right here. That's how we should all do FaceTime in movies. Also love that Peter's phone is still cracked. Dang it, MJ is always reading the best books. I really like how you're a people person. I love people. I love them so much. Oh, I feel that. I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out 
because then everyone that was in my life that I wanted to know knew, and it was perfect. Aw, oh, man, this just goes to show how young he is at this point. Something I talk about more in my Nebula video, but Peter doesn't understand that he's Spider-Man and therefore doomed to put his friends and family in danger forever. It's a bummer, but those are the rules. You both like each other, we get it, hang up. There's no new ground being broken. <laughs> Almost as if Happy has directed one of these before. Look, as a guy who started going gray in his early 30s, I can appreciate that baldness and gray hair aren't guarantees of someone's age, but it's clear that these are adults, and that's just so weird, but so perfect for how this would go in real life. As far as the public is concerned, you're no longer a kid once you're in the public eye. MJ, are you gonna have this spider, baby? Spider eggs? Do you lay eggs? <laughs> Isn't one flip enough, you madman? If you want to read about our inspiring friendship, you can now in my new book, Flashpoint. One spider, two hearts. Yeah, that's not exactly what Flashpoint is about, although maybe it one should be at this point. MJ, I know you're a fictional character, but much respect on that James Baldwin shirt. Love that the mural that had Howard Stark has been updated to add Hank Pym. <laughs> is that a little Ant-Man next to a Pym particle? Also, everyone keeps saying that Dr. Erskine is new, but he was there in Homecoming. Although, for the record, a world with Erskine means a world without Stanley Tucci, and honestly, that's not a sacrifice I'm willing to make. He rolls. Uh-huh. Oh, a murderer. Stop. Mysterio was right. Stop. Mysterio we don't, that's all. Right. You know what you did. Stop it, you're embarrassing yourself. You know what you did. Hannibal Burris being the Mysterio truther is genius level decision making. I can only guess he pushed for it. His ability to hypnotize females, which he used to seduce Jones Watson. <laughs> yes, my spider lord. Yep, confirmation that literally anything will remind a teenage mind that they should be necking. Necking? Who wrote that, my grandma? Variants include smooching, canoodling, Petting? That's not that's not what that means. Megan out. Kids still call it that, right? Ah, they do have chemistry. Let's land there. I can Spider-Man there. I mean, they have crime in Boston, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, have. wicked crime. Ah, wicked, because Boston. Nice, 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 nice. Be a fresh start. And we'll all be together. Accurate. Well, yeah. half accurate. Man, that Death Star cannot catch a break. Yeah, you might as well just whip around as Peter. Everyone knows why bother. Although he may be wearing it right before he drops down. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Well, don't, because he will just make me clean it. I just really love Zendaya's delivery as MJ in this movie. It's hard to describe what it is. Timid but sweet. Range. Just range. Love Strange's musical cue, but not nearly as much as the comparison being made here. Wait, can you just, like, Google map the Sanctum Sanctorum? Someone forgot to cast an monthly maintenance spell to keep the seals tight. Oh, right. <laughs> Strange's slip landing while he was flying down, casually sipping coffee out of a oh for fox sake mug. <laughs> Can't beat it. Wong, you've actually generated a good idea. <laughs> Strange is so petty. He only recalls it this way because he's being pissy with Wong. Wait, I thought you were the Sorcerer Supreme. No, he got it on a technicality because I blipped. Do you remember the full moon party at Camertage? No. Oh. Exactly. I'd watch a Disney Plus show called Wongy's Mind Blowers. Just leave me out of this. Ah, I'll have to do some karaoke with the new besties. The visualization of the spells in this scene, sort of reminiscent of how hackers visualize the internet and code, so hackers win. The problem is not Mysterio, it's you trying to live two different lives. This is pretty absurd advice coming from a guy who can literally change the world to whatever he wants and does with some regularity, but I think that's kind of the point. Strange actually hasn't come to terms with his own reality. If this was coming from Smart Hulk, it would really land. But Strange, while a decent person, is still petty and has something to prove. So he's going at Peter when it's clearly on him. We see in others what we hate in ourselves, bruh. Okay, I'll tell everyone that you're my best friend. I mean, they're gonna need to get along eventually anyway. I can't be the only one who wants an anti-venom storyline in the MCU. Is this what they mean by crushed velvet? Can't fit an iron inside that iron spider suit, huh? Vans are a good look, though. Oh, man! And the shadow changes with his outfit switch. Attention to detail. Please don't, don't let MIT be dumb like me. MIT is dumb? Dumb might be a stretch, but if you've seen that video of the robo-dog with a gun strapped to it, I'd argue that at the very least, MIT hasn't seen Terminator. Basically, what I'm trying to... Peter really honed in his tingle in Far From Home, so they've got the sound and visuals of him sensing down perfectly now. <gasps> Dr. Olivia Octavius? Are we about to get a Katherine Hahn cameo? Hello, Peter. Oh, okay, okay. He's, he's cool, too. JK, Alfred Molina rocks. What machine? The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Of course. Do you think Robin is going to do a show and not play Call Your Girlfriend? Play the hits. Should have killed your little girlfriend when I had the chance. What did you just say? <laughs> the instant kill mode spikes come out when he mentioned MJ. Looks like we got competition. I'm going to try not to say it over and over, but this movie is full of those, hey, it's those two people I know meeting each other thing I talk about all the time, and it's like on steroids in this movie. Doc Ock thinking Peter is cooler for having Ock looking tentacles is so fun. And while we're never going to touch the Doc Ock fight on the building, this is exciting. You love to see Otto holding his own with the Iron Spider because it makes Toby Peter seem even more badass. Otto always was one for tossing cars at Spidey. Character continuity. 
Oof, what is it with Doc Ock that brings the trains? And Tony's still saving Peter's life. You don't listen to him, you listen to me. I always thought that was just a quotable line between my friends and me, but apparently it's a universal one. Peter, you're a hero. Yeah, duh. Why wouldn't you want a superhero at MIT? Oh man, what a nostalgic introduction. There's only one, well, one type of villain that throws those pumpkins and his laugh right after confirms it. The multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. Wouldn't your first instinct be Beck? Is that you? It would be mine. The multiverse is real. But also Peter trusts Strange, so can't blame him. And I guess Edith had no reason to lie to him. Is this real? All illusions are down, Peter. How did you know you were made of magic? Because my, my Nana says that we have it in our family and- Yeah, she does. Magical hobgoblin, here he comes. But like, a good guy? Seriously, Peter, a little steam function like you had in Homecoming? Oh, it would go a long way. <sighs> That's better. Scour the internet and Scooby-Doo this sh <laughs> Honestly, I know I don't curse on this channel at all, except that one time, but I don't actually have a problem with cursing, and more importantly, swearing from superheroes is just delightful. You never expect it. I mean, nothing beats when Rogers does it, but come on. Even though it was your spell that got screwed up, meaning that all this is kind of your mess. Yes, thank you. Peter's too nice to throw this back in Strange's face, but Peter doesn't know magic, Brosif. This one's on you. Please, Scooby-Doo this Politeness. We could, like, help you. Why you gotta warm our hearts so much in the movie to then rip it away? Why is that always the Spidey story? Oh, right, the whole dooming your friends and family thing. Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> okay, Peter Parker, I mean, you just met Matt Murdock and you're friends with Stephen Strange, Harold Happy Hogan, Bruce Banner, and Pepper Potts. Better not ask Betty Brandt her last name. We team meet Kurt Connors, Michael Morbius, Sue Storm, Reed Richards camp. I'm done. Oh, is that a dinosaur? Ah, Captain Stacy made that mistake too. See, I knew there was a reason I rewatched all the Spidey movies for my Nebula video. If there was a giant dinosaur running around the streets of Manhattan, you would be the first to know. Um, <laughs> what? What happened to We you? tire of your questions, boy! <laughs> oh, we've missed you, Doc. Well, you're flying out into the darkness to fight a ghost. Technically, that's more accurate than you realize? My monkey's back. I better be careful in the Czech Republic. Details from last week's devastating attack in London have a. <laughs> I like the idea that all the dubstep for Electro has been diegetic, like he creates it with his dubstep powers. It's me, Flint Marco. You remember? Okay, so I've been thinking about this for a while, and the fact that Flint asks Peter if he remembers him lends to the idea that he dies a long time after fighting Peter, which gives me a little hope for BB. Thanks. Trying to make new friends. I hate the woods. That's crazy. Woods are great. Get it together. Although I guess they do generally lack electricity. Y'all just gonna stand here and act like I ain't butt snaking? I am. Uh, no. Not even a little bit. Jamie Foxx's workout routine. You know I can give you a real makeover. Let me guess. Into a lizard? <laughs> Glad to see these two still getting along. Where are we? It's complicated. A wizard's dungeon. Wizard's dungeon? There's no real way to sugarcoat that. It's literally the dungeon of a wizard. <laughs> Honestly, we're getting so close to Zendaya always being a win. I could do any of this without you, so thank you. Yeah, of course. Aw, love and sincere oh, gratitude. Ask him if this is like a tree monster. It's just a tree, man. Groot would like a word. Just a tree. Sal. Both a great moment for the character and a great way to move on from one of the most criticized aspects of the original Goblin design. Man, I don't know much about electricity. Wait, actually I do. I worked on clearing the right-of-ways on transmission lines just like these for years, and I'm here to tell you that webbing will definitely, without a doubt, fix all this to perfection. Sometimes. I'm not myself. I'm someone else. Just throw all the Oscars at this man, will you? In this place, in, Norman, in the in city, and I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. what's going okay. on with okay. me. Okay. I, I, I don't. And gotta be honest, I did not have dementia on my villains bingo card for this movie, but it all leads to where we're headed here. Norman meeting May first should have been a huge clue to us that she wasn't safe anymore. <laughs> Putting donuts in the pockets of his new green jacket over a purple hoodie. Daily Bugle supplements. The only other daily fix you need. When parody is more normal than reality. Osborne? What what happened to you? What happened to me? Neither Willem Dafoe nor Alfred Molina are retired, but I think it's safe to say that these characters from 20 years ago kinda were. So seeing them both fall right back in is amazing. You're insane. God, I love it here. Same. So I stopped him. I had him by the throat 
And then I... There's a few ways to look at this. Were they taken right when they found out Spider-Man's identity? Probably not, since Sandman seems to be trying to remind Peter who he is, meaning some time has passed since he floated off in the wind. And while it probably seems pretty convenient that the spell pulled them right before death, it makes sense when you think about how timelines work. They didn't get pulled before death so much as pulled from the furthest point they existed in their timelines. That's why the Peters are both their real-time ages if you consider that the timelines all run concurrently. I mean, the truth is that they wanted the best and most interesting versions of each character in their timeline, so I'm not too worried about the logistics. It's magic! That's how you should look at it. Abrica Marvelstone. If they die, they die. When you find yourself quoting the Russian, this one, or this one, you know you've done wrong. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> now you're thinking with portals. Yo, are those visual Spidey Sense wiggles around his head? I went back and checked when the Ancient One separated both Strange and Banner, and they weren't there. That's a Spider-Man thing, and it must be why his body was reflexively dodging Strange. Hot stuff. That might be one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me, but don't ever do that again. Appreciating a good time while setting important boundaries. I never knew I wanted to see MCU Spider-Man vs. Doctor Strange, but clearly the filmmakers knew it needed to happen because this is great, even if Strange is clearly taking it easy on Peter. No shade to Peter in his own movie, but... I mean, come on. Seriously, what is it with Spidey and trains? Can't stop getting spanked by him. <laughs> that sigh and slouch. He hates this. Ah, I see now Strange is really thinking with portals, but Peter's also been thinking. And when life gives him lemons, he won't make lemonade. He gets mad. He doesn't want their damn lemons. He demands to see life's manager. You know what's cooler than magic? Math. Incorrect, but A plus for enthusiasm. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. What was it we were saying about the hits? No way, that's his girlfriend, no way. I felt the same way until I saw him perform Umbrella on Lip Sync Battle, and now I totally get it. I'm gonna fry you from the inside out. Honesty, <laughs> refreshing honesty. I could go for a burrito. See, this is how they trick us, snacks. Universal good guy language. He's gonna kill us all. Actually, he's not gonna kill any of you, surprisingly. I don't need fixing. Especially by a teenager using scraps from a bachelor's junk drawer. Too soon, Octavius. How dare you invoke his... thing that someone said about him one time? Some of us still miss Stark. He's gonna kill us all. But yeah, his hesitation is understandable. OG Norman Osborn marveling at Tony Stark's tech isn't something I ever expected to see. What a time to be alive. Oh, my bad. My bad, Tony. Well, yes, I am thirsty. Fresh water or salt? You know, because you're an octopus. May is just genuinely good people. I'm glad she's here for the long haul. Look at this place and all the possibilities. This condo? Yeah, yeah, the condo. I love the whole open floor plan. No. You ever get the feeling that Jamie is constantly holding back an F-bomb? I do. I fell into a vat of electric eels. I fell into a super collider. Damn, gotta be careful where you fall. This is some Taika level self-awareness and I'm into it. This prolonged shot of Peter with a jump scare Doc Ock popping up? It's like an homage to Raimi's horror shots in Spider-Man 2, but you know, heartwarming instead of terrifying. I just don't think I'll ever get tired of nanotech. Who are those guys, huh? You bring a cyborg with robot legs into my house? One of the guys made of mud? What's going on? Call me back. Superheroes slash villains are just so commonplace that Happy is mostly concerned with the fact that there are strangers in his house. No more darker half. Just you. Just me. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Are these your Legos? <laughs> I can't tell if he's mocking Peter or if he wants to play with them. But either way, Lego, Max. Lego. Where is he? Uh, he's inside. And yet here we are, outside. Did you not hear me say, don't lose him? Stealing scenes, he's barely in. J.K. Simmons is always a win. I have to say, this dolly zoom starts a scene that made me the most tense I think I've ever been in a Spider-Man movie. Every muscle in my body was clenched in theaters. And I don't seem to be alone in that. Bravo to this scene. We know in the back of our minds that Peter isn't gonna die, but the uncertainty of what's about to happen just makes our hearts pump. But even with this scene, I was still surprised when what happens happens. The snorry cam stuck to Peter, the muffled sounds with accentuated footsteps, Peter's faster respirations. He's literally surrounded by villains with no idea where the sense is pointing him at first. It's finally closing his eyes like he did in Far From Home that lets him hone in on who's the threat. That's some neat trick, that sense of yours. Yeah, got you killed once before if you remember. Norman's on sabbatical, honey. And I honestly didn't predict the Goblin bringing so much sass. So Green Goblin and Norman have different teeth? I went back to Spider-Man 02 and he does there too. Even before Norman mentions May, Peter's first instinct and probably his spidey sense tells him to be concerned for May. They even share a glance that tells May everything she needs to know. I saw how she trapped you fighting her holy moral mission. I like that while he's wrong, he has an honest to goodness perspective about May and her optimism. It's not just, I don't like good guys. <laughs> it's the live action version of the Homer slipping into the bushes meme. I liked you better before. 
but I think we all agree on this, it's really nice to see Jamie Foxx get to actually do something with this character. Did you see that? And a real moment from the hate merchant. <laughs> yup, sorry PD, it's a, it's a yup punch. <laughs> all the Oscars, pure Tyler terror, Willem Dafoe is always a win. <laughs> and look, obviously I'm team Spidey, but that was a sick body slam. And if you're wondering why this cure didn't work on Goblin, it wasn't done. No good deed goes unpunished. It really is something to see Willem Dafoe back in this role chewing it up. We truly live in great times for movies. Peter, Everything else is going to crap. No, no, Peter, you, don't have listen, you listen to me. You have a gift. You have a power. From the moment she starts, we know where this is headed and it doesn't make it any easier. And with great power, there must also come great responsibility. What a line. A line that first appeared in a Marvel comic as written by a disembodied narrator in 1962. I have a lot of thoughts about that line, specifically what it means to all three of these boys and why I think it actually signals something even more profound for the MCU Spidey over the other two. It's way too much to talk about here, so like I've been super subtly slipping in here and there, I made an entire full-length companion video on Nebula looking into all three of these Spider-Man's origin stories, specifically looking at the villains of each of Tom Holland's three movies and just generally wrapping up my thoughts about the home trilogy and all the Spider-Man movies as a whole, really. Nope, did not see this coming. Not into it. I mean, yeah, it makes sense for the story and his arc and everything, but no. This scene has genuine IRL emotional impact for me. Marissa Tomei is fantastic and they waited for her last scene to really let her shine and I hate them for it. Maybe she's alive in the multiverse, but this one just stings. It's just a full-on kick to the feels. <laughs> Sorry. This scene, all around, Giacchino's heartbreaking score, the kiss on the head, the fact that he's not even allowed to mourn her for 10 seconds without getting shot by these stormtroopers. Look, it's that cab. That is such a cab. Everything Spider-Man touches comes to ruin, and we, the innocents, are left to pick up the pieces. This is maybe the only true thing Jameson says. He is a classically tragic character. It sucks being a Spider-Man fan because you know it's never truly going to end well. I mean, you get really emotional and gorgeous 2049 shots like this, but it still sucks. Salamanquero. Well, you're right, I am magic. We all are, but like, Ned is definitely more magic. <laughs> what? What? Okay, we all pretty much knew, but still this is just one of the coolest things to ever happen. And while we're all getting used to it now, honestly, five years ago this would seem absolutely wackadoo. Incredible times, again, just for movies. I, I was just here. It's also crazy how Into the Spider-Verse made this seem pretty normal, all things considered. Superhero thing. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Dang it, that slight whisper. No disrespect to anyone else, but now begins the long journey of Andrew Garfield carrying the weight of this universe on his shoulders. Why'd you do that? I was trying to see if you have the tingle thing. I have the tingle thing, just not for bread. Great line. That's the win. My Lola's asking if you could just get the cobweb there. Since you're like up there. Yeah. For real, this whole scene is just... Good. For now. So, I opened the wrong portal. <laughs> Beer middle sibling energy. Great, it's just some random guy. You bite your tongue, Ned. Show some respect. And again, let us not take for granted how totally bonkers and wonderful it is that this is happening. Spider-Man, we thought would never spider again are menning here in the MCU. I'd have passed out at least three times by now if I was Jacob or Zendaya. <laughs> it's the Spider-Sense reverb that happened in Spider-Verse. It doesn't get any better than this. Or does it? Empire State, it's a better view. That is a sweet view. I'm gonna say that thing again. My buddies, I've known them for most of my life. I saw them both chill out contemplatively on their respective building tops. Now they're talking to each other, freaking out a bit. Freaking out a bit. Real talk, I went into this like 85% blind, so I knew they were gonna show up, but I was already surprised by how many lines they'd had. So let's just say the freaking out hadn't even begun. <sighs> Hugging. I appreciate that Ned isn't sidelined for this moment. Once a dude finds his love, the temptation can be for everyone else to take a back seat. But Ned is important to Peter. Friendship love is important. Dudes need their dudes. Chicks need their chicks. Buddies need their buddies. Well, those other guys are from your world, right? So you deal with it. If they die, if you kill them. Spidey Sense makes it so they don't even need introductions. I mean, Andrew was wearing his suit, but even when he was in the shadows, it's clear that Tom knew who they were and didn't need confirmation after. And I know I just talked about dudes and their dudes, but oh boy, do we all need those loves too. Sometimes no one but your MJ can get you to rethink a decision like this. And all with just a glance. I lost... I lost Gwen. My, um... She was my MJ. You know, I, uh, I like to cry 
for effect sometimes in these videos, but Andrew sells this in a way that very clearly goes beyond acting. You can hear the words stick in his mouth and make his lip curl in. You can hear the lump in his throat. Emma Stone is alive, but man, Gwen Stacy is, is dead. And this is like reopening a wound you forgot you had. I got rageful. At some point, I just, I stopped pulling my punches. I always say I want this movie or that movie, but without a hint of irony, not a shade of comedy, I want to see that Spider-Man movie. Make that movie, we'll go to it. Just an unhinged Andrew Garfield going Spider-Ham on everyone. I know, he's moved past it now, so then it's a flashback movie where he's giving a warning to Jessica Drew or whomever, telling her all his exploits and how bad it was, but we'll get to see how awesome it was. Do it. Do it. I just don't want you to end up like, like me. And like, these guys caring for each other just because they can relate? Come on, guys being dudes. I wanted him dead. I got what I wanted. Sneaky way of pointing out that Toby didn't technically kill him. He broke his wrist and then the guy tripped and fell. She told me there was great power comes great responsibility. I'm gonna keep singing Garfield's praises, but let's not sleep on my boy McGuire. I love that he gets to finish the iconic line since it was uttered to him first. Connors, Marco, Dylan, and um, yeah, I get that. Acknowledging out loud that you're willing to save Goblin when he just murdered May wouldn't be anything I'd be ready to do. Well, I got Connors. I've already cured him once, so no big deal. Well, it's no big deal. Great. Like I said, Andrew's the middle sibling and Toby is filling in his older brother here. And Tom is all, you're a Peter Parker and you're confident? I think I can make an anti-serum for Dr. Osborne. Been thinking about it a long time. Gotta cure all of them. Right? And I also love that Toby gets this opportunity to right, not necessarily wrongs, but things he'd rather end differently. Toby wasn't to blame for Norman's death, but if he can fix him instead, why not? That's what we do. Pure older brother energy. Do you have a best friend too? I did. He died in my arms after he tried to kill me. I know Toby is being sincere here and it was a heart-wrenching moment, but Andrew in the background realizing that the same basic thing happened to him. I'm gonna steal your girl. You have someone? I got no time for uh, Peter Parker stuff, you know. Do you? Uh, that's a little complicated. Oh yeah? Well, tell me more. Actually, I'm 100% here for Spider-Man 4, complete with Bruce Campbell's Mysterio, John Malkovich's Vulture, and Anne Hathaway's Black Cat. Or if it's too weird since she was Catwoman, Alicia Guthbert or Allison Brie? I always felt like Felicia Hardy was older than Spidey though, so Rachel Weisz? Uma Thurman, huh? Keep the I was already in a comic book movie in the 90s thing going? Let's hashtag release the Snyder Cut this piece. It's the meme come to life. Life meme. So wait, are you gonna go into battle dressed as a cool youth pastor or? Oh, spider burn. What's that for? Uh, it's my web fluid, it's for my web shooters. Why? Finally, I know we're never gonna get an adequate explanation, but just acknowledging that Raimi is a madman that really pissed off some of the fans at the time. <laughs> Andrew can't take his eyes off the creepy web slingers. Oh, we could portal there. What? I'm magic now. Ned, you are always magic. And I promise you, I won't turn into a supervillain and try to kill you. And reassurance, but we'll we'll see, buddy. We'll see. We're gonna kick some ass. Cure. Cure some ass. Cure that ass. Golden Age of Movies. Peter Parker, what pernicious propaganda are you peddling? Ah, there's my alliterating adult author. A place that represents second chances. To uh, Tallahassee? Oh, right, Statue of Liberty. That, that makes more sense. <laughs> you okay? Oh, my back. Real life imitating art, imitating real life imitating art. You know, because Toby hurt his back and then my back did Spider-Man 2 when he thought he was back, but now he's really back. Nailed it. Yeah, that's good. But also great Logan-esque nod to the fact that even superheroes get old and stuff hurts. Just be careful with backs though, there, Andrew. That's good, right? That's better. Yeah. Man, this is just a silly hanging out moment between Spider's men and I wouldn't remove even one second of it. Ah, this is so cool. I always wanted brothers. Yeah, it's fine. I always wanted alternate universe clones of me, so, you know. So you like make your own web fluid in your body? Are you teasing me? No, 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 no. He's not teasing you. It's just that we can't do that. Of course he's sensitive about it, both in and out of universe, because that's not how it was in the comics and also gross, man. Like, does it just come out of your wrists or does it come out of anywhere else? Only, only the wrists. Spider Holland asking the Brody Bruce questions we all want the answers to. What are like some of the craziest villains that you guys have fought? I mean, for real, this is exactly what I want this scene to be. Literally, no notes. It's my buddies shooting the breeze with each other while waiting to fight self-proclaimed gods. They're not scared, they're way more interested in each other's lives. An alien made out of black goo once. Yeah, hey, get your chance, Tommy. I fought an alien too. 
on Earth and in space. Oh. Yeah, he was purple. That sounds like a weird note, but Toby specified color, so why not? I want to fight an alien. Look, I know I'm a little obsessed with pitching non-MCU Spidey movies in this vid, but hear me out. There aren't a ton of alien Spidey villains, but you take the Andrew Spidey flashback movie where he's training Alexander Daddario's Jessica Drew, and he's set the present day fight against the Xenophage that have come to Earth looking for Venom. And she wants to do some crazy Ender's Game level move, and Andrew is trying to teach her how it's not the right move by telling her how he went just law-abiding citizen on Paul Giamatti. He can kill Joseph Gordon-Levitt's jackal. No one will care. Let Andrew fight aliens. Is, is there a hashtag in there? Hashtag give Andrew aliens. I fought a Russian guy in a, like a rhinoceros machine. Because yeah, did you though? We never saw it. You're amazing. Just to take it in for a minute. Yeah, 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 I can you, take it in. No, I can take you it in. are amazing. I can take it in. Look, it's an in-joke about his movie titles, but also, yeah, these guys are all about building each other up. You throw a bunch of the nicest, most genuine boys in a room together, and they're gonna say nice things to each other. This is exactly how it would go. And the second Spidey hearing from the first Spidey, the OG, the one that he needed to live up to, that he is actually amazing? Come on. Ha, Electro finally got his comic accurate crown. Gross. This reminds me of this moment in Spider-Man 2, and anything that reminds me of how strong Toby Man always seemed is a win. I was in the Avengers. The Avengers? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. What is that? <laughs> See what I mean? They're still excited for Tom to have been part of something that at least sounds important. Is that a band? Are you in a band? So supportive. That's the pointing meme IRL 2.0. Peter 3. Peter 3. <laughs> Crap. Is Andrew Garfield always a win? No, no, no. He, he can't be. We already did his movies. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Sincerity? I think I've been watching this movie for too long now because now I'm realizing that Andrew dives just like he always did in his movies. Toby does a flip like he did in his movies and Tom tucks his knees up like he does in his movies. Where does it end? Superior to the usual superhero landing that Wade loves, these are a bunch of Spidey landings. Also, they landed in chronological release order. What's not the love? And speaking of altered clips, after the altered clip from the trailer, love seeing this scene in its full glory. Just wait your turn. Aha, there's that irreverent Andrew quick webbing up. Now that's what I call teamwork. Well, that's a shot from Spider-Man 3 and the score from Tobey Spider-Man. Jamie Foxx still crushing it as Electro. This movie's the pinnacle of second chances. There you go. And I love this. I love every part of this. I never want this movie to end. Now my buddies from the past that hated each other are working together in more than just a quick self-sacrifice? Would this have been the perfect moment to introduce Namor? No. Do I still wish the Savage Submariner rushed through the portal? Yes! Did you just open a portal? Yes, yes sir, I did. Hmm. We really don't know if that's a good hmm or a bad hmm. Yes, Maybe even a tad jealous hmm? I just thought she was gonna be black. Aw, and there's no one around to tell him about Black Panther either. Oh man, I'm sorry. I don't apologize. There's gotta be a black Spider-Man somewhere out there. But boy, do I have some news for you. If you like the sickest animation ever, I guess. Well, it's good to see you, dear boy. It's good to see you. You're all grown up. Wait, why is this making me cry? Dang it, Marvel. Stop making me feel my feelings. I'm so old. I've been dangling over the Grand Canyon for 12 I know, hours. I know, I know, I know. I, uh... You went to the Grand Canyon? He could have used your help. No, 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 it's okay. Spidey's has got Spidey's back. All three of the Spider-Men saw the pumpkin. Or at least felt the tinglys. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay, I jumped the gun on the Andrew moment that really brought me to tears. Giving Andrew the chance at a sliver of redemption choosing to grab her rather than rely on his web this time. Oof. The look on his face crushes me. Says so many things in one look. Andrew Garfield is always a win, but also, told you I'd see you, girl. And just to like step back from the movie for a second, Zendaya getting caught by an OG Spider-Man has to be a freaking trip. Cause let's be honest, she's a fan. She was 18 when Andrew tried to catch Gwen. This has to be an out of body experience. It is for me and I'm not even there. Plus the similar visuals and the clanging of the metal reminding us of the clock pieces hitting the ground. <laughs> I used to talk about how magic wasn't going to be in the MCU, and I really think they weren't sure how far they were going to push it. Iron Man was meant to feel grounded in reality, and then Thor said science and magic are the same thing, but now we've got the fabric of reality between dimensions cracking, so suck it, Lee, from six years ago. Thank you, Mr. Cape, sir. More politeness. Poor Peter. Too weak to send me home to die. Ooh, Sassy Goblin is really pushing his luck now. 
whistling at his own knife? He's not, he's not wrong though, it's cool. Amazing how they mix this tension building fight where you know Peter is going a lot harder than normal. Full on rage beast and maybe it's not the best thing, but he's still doing dope moves and it's fun to watch even if we're seeing something he'd probably rather we didn't see. But yeah, I, I don't blame him. And now Toby gets a sliver of redemption to clear his ledger of all regrets. It's Toby's turn to convey so much with just a look, understanding, compassion, and empathy, while at the same time a, you know this isn't what we do look, you know this isn't how May wanted you to use your power look, and the trust that Peter 2 has in Peter 1, something we didn't see that time that Tony covered his face thinking Cap would bring the shield down in his head. Spider Brothers know. Big bro Toby knows. <laughs> You are the one that killed her. Willem Dafoe is always a win, especially when he embraces Dafoe. <laughs> He'll cure him, but it's gonna hurt a little. It's fair. Peter. But hey, Willem Dafoe friend is back. And for the record, this is Killing Goblin. Either the cure or just plain murder works, but that bee is dead. You can scour the internet to watch videos on who everyone thinks is in the sky here, but what I really love about it is this tease element of it that is so straight out of the comics. Yeah, that looks like Kraven, Rhino, Scorpion, but the idea that there's more and maybe we can figure it out and maybe we can't is what I like most about it. Unsolvable clues hinting at a massive universe are sometimes the best. I'll see you around. It's not good. How did he not say no you won't? Too much, Agent J? I, I really don't know how to say this. I, Peter. I want you to know that I... You know. It's what we do. Yeah, it's what we do. And it works in universe as the third Spidey finally taking the baton from the OGs. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hugging. Uh, you're in so much pain, huh? I am. Honesty. What, what if we can't remember you? I, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. I know. So rarely does the it person of the moment live up to the hype, but dang, Zendaya has the chops. Believe it. So often it's their personal life shoving fame on them, but with Zendaya, it's pure talent. I promise. I promise. Well, there goes Ned's promise to not become Hobgoblin. I can hear him yelling about how Peter broke his promise to come find him now. I love you. I've cried like 17 times so far. Page of Marvel. Love. So here's a long shot, but Peter has this cut in his right cheek right now, and if you've watched the original Spider-Man movies enough, you know that Toby has that scar. So, interdimensional character continuity? I <sighs> hope to see you both again. We all do. You can stay gone. My name is Peter Parker. You don't know me, but I... Aw, the MIT lady pointed out that he wasn't prepared, so he's prepared this time. You didn't rehearse that, did you, Peter? Hey! Oh, wow! The wave past Peter that happened to Toby in the first five minutes of Spider-Man? Coming full circle. My name is Peter Parker, and I... would like a coffee, please. Well, I'll rip your soul right out of your chest. When I was... Oh, Peter, you noticed the band-aid, but not the necklace? She's wearing the broken necklace you gave her. You okay? Doesn't really hurt anymore. <laughs> that line hit me hard the second time through. He's standing there, going through the same thought process that McGuire went through when he told MJ he didn't love her. That loving someone and being Spider-Man puts them in danger, and she says that her cut doesn't hurt anymore, but what he heard and realized was that losing Peter doesn't hurt anymore. It can't, since she doesn't know about the loss. Is there anything else? But also, I'm sorry, what? Why are you breaking promises? Hello, Sierra. You better, you better. Was that nostalgia, deja vu, something, anything? Wait, you tell me when you see me again? <laughs> and then he may never get to say it? Is there a sadder Marvel movie? But I don't, maybe, I don't, I'm not sure. I lost a good friend a while back. Felt like this. Shows how important May was for him to not only compare her to Tony, but also not name drop him. And he's finally caught up and is our real Peter Parker. Well, there goes MIT. Peter's entire high school existence has been erased. Yeah, I guess GED makes sense. Even if he's not willing to risk MJ and Ned's lives, obviously he still cares about them. But <laughs> did he like break into Happy's place to steal the Emperor back? And why did Happy think he had Ned's Lego Death Star? You know what, Never mind. Yeah, it's just what they do. I'm not gonna lie, this is by far my new favorite Spidey suit. And after his darker or golden suits, it even feels inspired by his spider brothers. Like iridescent blue. Love it. Love this ending. I mean, I, I hate this ending. But blank slate Spidey thwipping around in his homemade comic accurate inspiring suit in the nighttime Christmas snow? And all to Michael Giacchino's hopeful and optimistic score? Michael Giacchino is always a win. Don't know what the single frame close up is about. Maybe just showing that he doesn't have mechanical irises anymore? By the way, I'm not complaining. Staying on message with the sketchbook credits. Ah, they did it again. Third time's a charm for pointing memes. Football is life. What aliens love? Eating brains. This is true. And you have to love that Eddie and Venom just decided to stay in Mexico and drink for however many days this was. Love to see character continuity even outside their own franchise. Alien life, uh, finds a way. The multiverse 
is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. I don't love that this is essentially a trailer. And never mind, this looks awesome. Stoked! This movie exists, ding. Sorry. I sort of can't believe this movie exists. It's straight out of some R Marvel fan fiction. So like, a spell brings the other two Spideys into the MCU and they team up to fight all the major villains from their franchises with MCU Spidey. And it's incredible, for real. I mean, you watch this 45 minute video, so you know how I feel. The movie's like a dream, one of my favorite theater experiences in recent memory, which, well, I've been like three times in the last three years, but it stands. And I know I said Zendaya probably freaks a bit getting caught by Andrew, but you know who else is freaking out? Toby and Andrew. These guys get to be in the MCU. We talk about how stuff is important because we were kids when we saw it, but I haven't been a kid for a while and like probably makes me lame to say so, but the MCU is pretty dang important to me and I wouldn't be surprised if it is to Toby and Andrew and now they're part of it. Just so happy for everyone. Happiness all around. And I really don't want to be the old guy that's all, you kids don't understand how good you have it, but dang, you kids. Comic books weren't cool when we were kids. I mean, I thought they were cool, and obviously I was very, very cool, but reading comic books wasn't considered cool. So to see three generations of Spiders Men in the same movie along with some of the original villains is, it's hard to even put in words. I guess what I'm saying is this movie could have been absolute slop and I probably would have loved every minute of it, but instead it was a beautiful culmination of all the live action Spider Man lore we've seen. It's everything I loved about comics and those movies done to near perfection as a movie. But okay, are there plot holes? Yeah, maybe. Doctor Strange is pretty cavalier about using fabric of reality altering magic. People thought maybe he was a scroll before release. And sure, the world goes from Spider-Man helped save the universe to Spider-Man is a freedom-hating murderer real quick. And no, the Peter Parker Neuralizer spell doesn't leave the story all that tidy, but none of that took me out of the movie. I think it's been five hours and come up with solid reasons for all of those things, and now that I'm saying that I'm super down for it, but we don't need it. Again, I'll take it. Weird, stupid stuff happens all the time in real life, and sometimes the explanation is, oops, all crunch berries. And it's a bold move to alter the MCU like this. I mean, it's entirely possible that Multiverse of Madness is gonna undo or make all this irrelevant, but still, it hadn't occurred to me yet, but this will make Spider-Man the only Avenger with a secret identity. I guess his Avengerness has always been a bit iffy. I can't say if Tony filed the correct paperwork after Peter unblipped in the 15 minutes before he died, but still, they all remember the Spider-Man fighting with them, but not who he was. Interesting. But either way, the emotion is there. The death of Aunt May, Andrew saving MJ, Toby just being there and saving Norman's life. These things alone would make an emotional film. I don't think Marissa Tomei will ever get enough credit for her take on Aunt May. She brought humor and stakes to the character and while it makes sense for the film, I'm heartbroken to see her go. I do a real deep dive on why Aunt May's delivery of the iconic power and responsibility speech means so much more to Tom than to the other two in my exclusive video over on Nebula, but it's still so powerful to see Toby and Andrew be able to commiserate with Tom in this moment. And the entire cast in this is all on their A-game. Jacob Batalon continues to delight, and I mean it when I say I hope he becomes the Hobgoblin. His comedic timing alone could really make things interesting. And what else can I say about Zendaya? We're watching someone become a full-on world-class A-list actor, and it's just wonderful. I love getting to see Jamie Foxx redeem his Electro. He was scary and funny and more of the Electro we all hoped we would have gotten in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Alfred Molina is a legend, and I love that they let him be more of a hero in this film because I love liking Alfred Molina. And then our guy Willem. I mean, Come on, he goes for it, and it's everything I could have wanted. I enjoyed Dane DeHaan's version of Green Goblin and thought Amazing Spider-Man did some intriguing stuff with him, but it's hard to compete with the OG king of the Goblin game. He's somehow more over the top comic booky and yet also more grim and scary. It's goofy to look back at his first appearance. He and Raimi went full camp, but somehow adding it together with these real stakes makes him the perfect level of unhinged. I guess if you're the type of guy to make movies like Antichrist and The Lighthouse, you can end up a little out there. Keep being you, Willem. And my boys. Look at these boys. The three of them knock it out of the park. Holland solidifies his place as probably the best live action Spider-Man, but our previous Spideys do a great job of reminding us why they were both great. Toby, our first love, reminding us why he broke all the records back in the day. We didn't know a lot, but he showed us the ropes and we'll always love him for it. Andrew. Sweet, sweet Andrew, the chaos Spidey. Our relationship with Andrew was quick and wild. It didn't end well, but dang, it was nice to see him again. He made us realize we didn't appreciate him enough when we had him. His character also seems to be going through the most, so we wouldn't mind slumming it a bit and catching up with him for a little part three, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. And Tom, the Spidey we never knew we needed, but are now happy to be with. For real, Tom Holland is a true talent. And the MCU should feel lucky to have snagged somebody like him on the rise. Marvel continues to make bangers, and they might have even saved Sony along the way? I mean, how many trilogies is this now with no misses? That used to be rare. As I said, I'd gladly watch more Maguire or Garfield Spider-Mans. Now, if only Disney would stop being cowards and make Willow part of the Marvel canon as well. Do it, cowards.
Those are my thoughts on No Way Home, except for my Nebula exclusive that's all about the different Peter's origin stories and why I think the MCU and Tom's is by far the best. And you can sign up for Nebula with my link and go watch it right now. Next week's movie, you already know it's this one, but if you sign up for Nebula, you'll get to see this one at the same time as I publish this one, but next week. Thanks for watching. Just got out of hand.